Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to London. Welcome to Westminster. Right now, I'm on the north bank of the River Thames, just opposite the London Eye, and I'm headed towards the Palace of Westminster, the House of Parliament, and Big Ben. It's September right now, which is the beginning of autumn here in London. That's what I want to talk about and share with you today month of September and a little of autumn and the changing seasonality that comes with that. There's quite a number of events here this month. Every month there's uh, so much to see and do. You'd run it a month long before you ran out of things to do and that's just the, uh, the permanent fixtures. This month there's a Thames Festival um, which why I thought it'd be fitting to start next to the river, which is a month long series of events. There will be art installations, performance, exhibitions, there's some concerts, and of course, boats and cruises along the river. There's also a very popular open house event this month, where over 800 buildings open their doors to the public that aren't normally open to the public. Some are private, some are publicly owned, but parts of which you won't normally get to see some phenomenal architecture and amazing interiors will be open for tours and it's the last month this month September when you can visit and tour Buckingham Palace for Majesty the Queen and the Royal Family return from their summer holidays however rather than visiting pop-up events this month I think try and concentrate a little on the changing season Autumn to time when London will be transitioning from summer through to winter. Very soon the, uh, the leaves and all these trees will be changing colour before they fall. And the days are already beginning to get a little shorter. It's getting lighter later and darker earlier and the temperature's definitely dropping. Having said that, it's still a great time to be outdoors and um, it'll be interesting to go to the parks and walk along the river and um, maybe some of London's canals and see the autumn colours. Have a go for a walk, stop at a uh, traditional British pub and uh, they'll be firing up the traditional coal and log fires. I can quite like a pint next to a real fire. But um, before we go and do all that good stuff, um, I need to take care of a little chore. Um, this jacket, it's a barber wax jacket and they're a bit of a British classic. Um, you see loads of people here in London wearing them. They're really, I think barber really make um, clothing for outdoor and country pursuits, but they're pretty popular all over the world. Um, they make a great overcoat. They're pretty uh, versatile. However, they're made, of, they're made of cotton, which isn't waterproof, and to make them waterproof, they're then waxed. Um, being made of natural products, they decay slightly, so you have to service them. But if you look after them, they last years. I mean, this one's over 10 years old. They'll last decades. You can send them back to Barber, and they, if you damage them and they'll patch them up, they start to look, I think they look a little bit better when they're older. They get a, a bit of character, but anyway, I need to take care of this one. I could have sent it back to Barber, but I've left it a little late, so I'm gonna have to uh, do it myself. So I'm gonna head to the Barber shop and get a pot of wax wax this jacket and then we'll be good for the autumn winter season and um, the rain that's uh, the rain's coming um, the cold is already here um, it's getting a little bit chilly definitely coat weather not quite hat and glo um, hat gloves and scarf yet but um, yeah as you can see from the clouds rain's never too far away but I'm gonna head down here to uh, Westminster Duke. Uh, let me uh, show you quickly the progress of the scaffolding on Big Ben. It's getting a little higher. You can hear hammering. Um, the bell's been... Big Ben Bell has been um, stopped while they work on it for now. Um, 
which has heartbroken many Londoners and tourists. But I'm going to head down here to uh, Westminster Tube. We'll get Tube to Monument, head up to Leadenhall Market where there's a barber store, and I'll get some wax, my wax jacket. Okay, welcome to Monument in the city of London. I'm going to head up the road to Leadenhall Market and uh, get some wax to re-wax this barber wax jacket. But I thought before we run up there, I'll show you where the area station gets its uh, namesake. The Monument to the Great Fire of London, check it out. The entrance is on the other side and you can actually climb all the way to the top and you get phenomenal views across the city of London. But that's the story for another day. Let's head up to Leadenhall Market and hopefully the barber store within the market will have some uh, wax to re-wax my jacket. Let's go. Welcome to Leadenhall Market. Leadenhall Market used to be a market, primarily a meat market for many years, and my great grandfather was actually a butcher here. And uh, today it's filled with restaurants and bars. You can still see the meat hooks here, or not the meat hooks, the rails that the meat hooks would have hang from back when all these stores were selling meat. And uh, butchers, get yeah, a closer look here. So yeah, all these hooks were uh, the meat hooks. And the meat would have hung through here. With a very different smell, it smells amazing today. Um, today the city is dominated by financial services, so most of the stores in here are um, mid to high end stores, catering to uh, fine folk that work in the city. Most of which work in financial services. And obviously restaurants and bars. Um, it's pretty busy today. It's just gone lunchtime. And, uh, I'm getting the shoes shined. Shoes shined. Right, this is where I need to go. The barber store. And let's, uh, let's see if they've got some wax for my wax jacket. But yeah, you're in town. Lennon Market's a great spot to come for uh, lunch, dinner, or after work drinks. Okay, success. Got the wax to wax the jacket. Now you can actually send these uh, send your jackets 
back to Barber and they'll repair wax or service them, damage them. Just want to service. However, I've left it a bit late. I want to be without it for the first few weeks of uh, autumn winter. So um, I'm do it myself. Um, I think this part of uh, their normal market, Harry Potter fans will be um, familiar with because uh, they used it as the location to film one of the, one of the movies. In. Right, I'm going to head back to Monument, get the tube home, back to my jacket, and then we'll be ready for the autumn winter season. So, uh, see you guys in a moment. That's the headline you want to read as you're walking into the tube. Just got back from the barber store with the wax to re-wax this jacket. Now I was hoping to do this in daylight, but as you can see, it's got dark already. I had a few things to take care of on the way back and it's getting dark pretty early here now. It's autumn. It's one of the things I'm gonna miss about summer, the long days. But anyway, I wanna do this now so we can leave the jacket to dry overnight and then hopefully I can wear it tomorrow. So let's read the instructions. How to reproof your wax products. You require a pan of hot water and a soft cloth or sponge. Choose a warm room or outside on a hot day. So really I should be doing this in sun. Stand the tin in hot water to soften dressing. Work the dressing well into the garment using the cloth or sponge. Pay attention to seams, creases and dry patches. That's actually where this jacket's beginning to leak a little, around the seams. Rubbing well, don't just paint on. For a factory finish, blow evenly with a hairdryer, and then finally hang the garment overnight in a warm place. Okay, now I'm gonna pop it on a hanger and leave it somewhere warm to dry overnight. Okay. Morning. As you can see, the sun is just coming up outside. I left the jacket hanging somewhere warm overnight and it looks okay. The seams have got a good covering of wax, so I'm pretty confident it's going to be waterproof once again. I didn't get a completely even covering, so the back's got a little more than the arms. So visually, cosmetically up close, I can notice that but I don't think anyone else will. I guess if you really want a factory finish, you can send it back to Barbara and they'll make it as close to looking like new as possible. If you're gonna do it yourself, I definitely recommend using the hairdryer because it's quite difficult to apply the wax evenly. What the hairdryer does is really melt the wax while it's on the jacket, it allows you to rub it in and distribute it a little more evenly. But all in all, I'm happy with that. I used a round half of the pot of wax. So um, out of that one pot, I'm gonna get two re-waxings. Do the next one next winter, or ideally, I guess you wanna do it in summer when it's warm, rather than uh, in winter when it's cold and dark. So now I'm waterproof once again. We can uh, head outside. September, so I want to focus a little on autumn and changing seasonality. I think the uh, first place we can go to is one of London's markets where you'll get to see some of the changes and I'll get to smell and taste them. It'll obviously be uh, changing seasonal produce and changing taste in street food. 
I'm wearing old clothes today to go out in this for the first time because I'm pretty confident. Where I did this myself, it's gonna be a little bit of excess wax in places and I'm gonna get some of that on my clothes. Like that, you know. I thought it would smell more. It does smell a little waxy, but not too bad. As you can see, well I don't know if you can see, but the leaves on the trees, on some trees are already beginning to change colour. In a few weeks time there'll be no green leaves out there at all apart from the mistletoe growing up the trees. And a lot of the trees on the embankment yesterday were still completely green but that will change so maybe we'll go and look at some of London's parks or canals. But first up, let's head to the market. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to London Bridge. I've come to London Bridge Station, which is right behind me. You can see I'm right beneath the famous Shard building. In front of me is the renowned Borough Market, which is where I'm headed. Now, it's mid-September right now, and as you saw yesterday, there were blue skies and sunshine. Today, it's a different story. Completely overcast, grey, and it looks and feels like it's going to rain. Now I'm hoping it doesn't rain, but I'm also uh, interested to see how well I've waxed this jacket and see if it is waterproof once again. Um, the reason I've come here, I think one of the great things about living in a country and a city with changing seasons, the constant cycle through spring, summer, autumn and winter, is there's always something to look forward to. The changing seasonality brings not necessarily new things but old favorites and I think the market will be a good place to showcase that just a month ago I was here in a t-shirt and shorts enjoying cold drinks next to the river and today I'm expect well I'm dressed a little more warmly and so are most other people. And I'm guessing there will be a certain amount of change in what's for sale. Although we live in a globalised globalised world where you can get whatever you want, whenever you want, um, the changing weather will bring with it changing tastes. So a month ago, whereas people walk around eating ice creams and ice cold sorbets and ice cold smoothies, I'm expecting in the market more sausages, pies, duck confit sandwiches. And I'm certainly gonna be looking for something warm to drink, first of all, coffee and something warm to eat. So we'll go and take a look around. Now, obviously, hopefully for you, the market will look a little different. There'll be a lot of seasonal produce for sale, but already I can smell a difference. Um, the warm food cooking. So yeah, the combination of it visually looking different and it's smelling different makes it feel very different from season to season. So let's go into the market, get a coffee and take a look around. Hopefully find something warm, comfy to eat. for um, pies, scotch eggs. It's uh, longer today than the queue for smoothies. I'm gonna get in the queue for coffee, which is always long here at Monmouth. You've been here long? I got here about half to ten. Okay, the best way to start any trip to Borough Market is a visit to Monmouth Coffee behind me. The queue is always that long, all day Saturday. It goes pretty quickly. Um, queues don't lie. 
coffee is phenomenal. Right, now I've got my coffee. It's, a, it's just a um, pour over filter coffee, Kenyan coffee. Now I've got my coffee. Let's uh, go and take a look around the market. See what looks good to eat. Okay, right now I'm torn between two old favourites. The cap casing um, toasted cheese sandwiches. It used to be a market store here and now got a store here and um, the duck confit sandwiches from the market store opposite Monmouth Coffee both look and smell phenomenal. I think I'll have a uh, little walk around and uh, see if anything else looks good and then make a decision. day like today there's a little salad and um, some plum sauce I think in there cuts through the duck nicely right I'm gonna eat this have a look around and um, then we'll go and uh, check out a different part of London Okay, welcome to Kensington Gardens, one of London's royal parks. Check this out, it's the beginning of autumn, so many of the trees are still green, and a few of them, a handful of them, are just starting to change colour before the leaves fall. Okay, London is one of the greenest cities in the world. I don't mean that in an environmental sense. I mean it in a literal sense. There's a lot of um, parks, public parks and royal parks like this one, which are open to the public by a sort of grace and favor setup. I guess the, uh, the monarch that uh, closes the gates on the royal parks probably have a um, very short reign. Um, the only reason we have a monarchy, any country has a monarchy, most countries have a monarchy is because the people want one. Um, but yeah, a walk in the park is a very popular activity, especially during autumn, as uh, the leaves change colour, the, uh, the parks will start to look probably their most spectacular, as is walks along the river or walks along the canals. I thought I'd come to um, Kensington Gardens, it's probably one of the uh, most spectacular looking parks, especially the Italian gardens which I head down to just down here, but wherever you are in London you're not going to be very far from a park or some green space. 
if you want to escape the hustle and bustle of the the city, I think that's why it's a popular activity. I mean, I was born in the city, I've lived in the city all my life. It doesn't particularly um, bother me, city life, but I think for a lot of people, if they've uh, come from more rural parts of the country or other parts of the world, um, they often want to take a break from the concrete and uh, they'll head here. But we'll head down to the um, Italian gardens, I'll show you that. Now I'm going to take a walk through the park. I'm right on the edge of the park, hence you can still hear the sirens and the um, and I'm right next to a busy road. But in the middle of the park, there's a lake down here as well. I'm going to walk down actually from the Italian Gardens. I'm going to walk through down to. Uh, Probably down to, towards South Kensington. But um, when you're in the middle of the park, um, you really do get to, to some extent, escape the, uh, the background noise of the city and um, get a little taste of, uh, I guess, more uh, rural life. Okay, it's not often you see a uh, Rolls Royce ice cream van, but there it is. Um, this is the Italian gardens behind me, go and take a look at that. Um, of all the walks through all of the parks, if I was going to go on one, um, I think this would be one of the most picturesque from where I start here at the Italian gardens and then walk down around Serpentine Lake. And that's precisely what I'm going to do today. Check out the Italian gardens. Okay, I'm going to head down here. It's quite a long walk. I'm not going to uh, share all of that with you. But um, I'll show you some of the highlights. And then, We'll go to another part of London and take a look at that. Share some of another part of town this September and this Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's rather early on a Sunday morning. We've just got the tube over to Bethnal Green in the east end of London and walked over here to Columbia Road, which is home to Columbia Road Flower Market. It's a Sunday market, which I would say is quite famous and renowned amongst Londoners, but I guess still unknown hidden gem for visitors and tourists. It's a flower market, you can get flowers, plants, shrubs, even your tree. It's um, open for quite a short period of time. Uh, Sunday mornings, opens early. It's just gone eight right now. It will be fully fired up. It winds up about two or three. And um, the shops lined with boutiques size stores. We'll take a look around and I'll show you. Um, selling antiques, crafts, um, pottery. And there's even a good pub here. That's a great roast if you're here later in the day. 
Vater. Also da muss ein Schlafen der Angst. Ich glaube, das war recht viel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come on, five or a bunch of them. Okay, just got some dried lavender for a certain room in my house to uh, make it smell fresh. Three boxes of pain is the time. Three boxes of pain is the time. Get three boxes of pain for a pie. Oh, 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 oh. Key to Columbia Road, unless you're planning to go to the pub, coffee shops, and have a leisurely, leisurely breakfast is to come early because it's relatively um, quiet. Um, it's quite confined in here. Later on, it gets incredibly busy. You can't move. Also, early on, get the uh, pick of the crop. Food, okay, success. It's uh, barely nine o'clock, got lavender to make a certain room smell nicer, and a bunch of roses to brighten someone's day. Um, the market's starting to get a little busier now. The, uh, the key is to get here early so you can uh, have a good wander around. It's very busy later on. Um, when you're here, it's good to pop down this little street behind me next to the Royal Oak Pub, which you can see there, uh, when the market's in full swing. It's um, a little bit calmer down here, but also there's uh, a few great spots to get something to eat something to drink and uh, they serve coffee in the backyard of the uh, the pub but there's a couple of spots to get coffee down here I'm not sure if they'll be open yet but um, I'll show you down here anyway they want to get busy down here as well so yeah in a little while they'll put tables and chairs out here there's a coffee shop sandwich bar there and uh, they open the yard of the pub there and they'll be serving coffee out the back of the pub. There's also another little courtyard here. Yes, yeah, a little oasis of calm just off the market um, later on in the morning. Okay, still early on a Sunday morning, so um, I'm going to head home and uh, enjoy the rest of my Sunday. And uh, see you guys in a little while in a completely different part of London. Okay, welcome to Paddington Station. Now for me right now, it's the last week of September and it's very much beginning to feel like autumn. Summer feels now like a, a memory, a fond memory, but a memory nonetheless. The days are noticeably shorter in terms of daylight hours and it's definitely getting colder. However, on nice days like today, going for a walk here in the city and I guess escaping the hustle and bustle of city life um, is a very popular activity now as I was saying earlier obviously walking along the River Thames and one of the many parks especially the Royal Parks is very popular um, including with uh, visitors there's a lot of 
is that there are attractions on those sections, on many sections of the River Thames, but this, the, um, the canal network here in uh, London is a very popular spot for uh, Londoners because as you can see it's uh, a lot less busy than uh, the, uh, the banks of the Thames or the parks for instance. This is the um, Paddington Basin I think. Um, it's a section of the Regent's Canal and just down here I'm going to share with you is um, a very picturesque section of the canals. It's where the Regent's Canal meets the Grand Union Canal and it's an area called Little Venice. Um, but it's also very accessible. You can walk straight out of Paddington Station there which is an overground station and a tube station and you come out right next to the canal and just a short walk from Little Venice and I think when we get to Little Venice um, the, the part nicknamed the Lagoon I'll share with you a hidden gem which uh, popular beginning and end to many walks here in London it's a traditional London pub so we'll uh, go and check one of those out too let's walk up to the Lagoon section of Little Venice Okay, welcome to Little Venice. It's a pretty picturesque part of the canals. It's actually a meeting point, a junction of two canals, I believe. The, uh, the Regent's Canal and the Grand Union Canal. Very popular place for people to come for a walk or cycle along the towpaths, walk their dogs. And um, there's plenty of houseboats here, as you can see. There's even a, uh, one of the boats, here is even a cafe. On nice days, sunny days, there's a park just there, which is open to the public, um, Rembrandt Park I think, which is a real popular spot for uh, picnics next to the canal. And um, this is just a short walk from Paddington, however if you walk up the towpaths there, you will eventually, it's quite a long walk, but you'll eventually come to Camden, which that's a popular walk. You can get, however, there are plenty of um, boat trips that leave here so you can get the boat so we'll go up on the bridge we'll go up here on the bridge and I'll give you a, a look at Little Venice the lagoon and uh, then just over here I'll take you to uh, a hidden gem a great spot to end any walk the pub yeah look at this the walkside cafe amazing views from up here on the bridge both ways along the canal okay, and just around here um, is I guess a bit of a hidden gem for uh, Little Venice which hidden behind two rows of these amazing looking villas um, a great spot to end any walk in the pub um, but I'm going to end this walk and this little look at London in the month of September and the beginning of autumn here in town and uh, I hope you enjoyed this little look around some things to do this month and this season so until next time Toodles. And uh, yeah, after that long walk, 
a well earned drink in the Warwick Castle. Check it out.